morning, everyone. As we gather together today in this great Advent season, I invite you to join in singing our opening hymn, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, number 20. And today we will be singing verse number 7 to correspond with the appropriate O Antiphon. Hymn number 20, verse number 7. <coughs> Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. And with your spirit. <clears throat> My dear brothers and sisters, as we gather together today and prepare now to enter into our worship, let us begin as we acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who see the human race fallen into death, willed but to be redeemed by the coming of your only begotten Son. Grant, we pray, that those who confess his incarnation with humble fervor may merit his company as their Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Samuel. In those days, Hannah brought Samuel with her, along with a three-year-old bull, an ephah of flour, and a skin of wine, and presented him at the temple of the Lord in Shiloh. After the boy's father had sacrificed the young bull, Hannah, his mother, approached Eli and said, Pardon, my Lord. As you live, my Lord, I am the woman who stood near you here, praying to the Lord. I prayed for this child, and the Lord granted my request. Now I, in turn, give him to the Lord. As long as he lives, he shall be dedicated to the Lord. She left Samuel there. The word of the Lord. Be God. My heart exalts in the Lord my Savior. My heart exalts in the Lord my Savior. My heart exalts in the Lord. My horn is exalted in my God. I have swallowed up my enemies. I rejoice in my victory. My heart exalts in the Lord, my Savior. The bows of the mighty are broken, while the tottering gird on strength. The well-fed hire themselves out for bread, while the hungry batten on spoil. The barren wife bears seven sons, while the mother of many languishes. 
My heart exalts in the Lord, my Savior. The Lord puts to death and gives life. He casts down to the netherworld. He raises up again. The Lord makes poor and makes rich. He humbles. He also exalts. My heart exalts in the Lord, my Savior. He raises the needy from the dust. From the dung heap he lifts up the poor to seat them with nobles and make glorious throne their heritage. My heart exalts in the Lord, my Savior. of all nations and keystone of the church come and save man whom you formed from the dust alleluia The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Mary said, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked upon his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me. And holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel For he remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Mary remained with Elizabeth about three months and then returned to her home. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, this week in the last days of our Advent journey, as you well know, we have been proclaiming and hearing from the gospel and the liturgy of the word from the different parts of the infancy narratives of both St. Matthew and St. Luke. And today, as we hear our gospel from St. Luke, we hear the familiar passage in which is contained what we often refer to as the Magnificat or the Hymn of Mary. And Mary is reminding us in these words and through this prayer how her soul is magnifying the greatness of God. And she reminds us in this that it is not Mary who is great on her own, but how Mary has allowed herself by her perfect yes to be the true message message of God and to be the perfect disciple of God. And as we see this, it teaches us that Mary allows herself by that yes to truly echo the praise to God that we should all have. And by allowing herself to be that instrument of God's grace, she becomes that holy vessel, but she becomes truly a model of how we are all called 
to allow the Lord to work through us, but we are to be the means of allowing his voice and that entire divine being to be experienced and proclaimed throughout the world. And in this late Advent season, the church is reminding us that as we celebrate that time when Christ takes on flesh and comes to us as the infant child of Bethlehem, that indeed God's manifestation to the world is brought about with the beautiful cooperation of humanity. If we think about that, Mary represents humanity's perfect cooperation with God. And so often, as the early church fathers would remind us, she's the new Eve. Where the first Eve failed, Mary shows us the potential of humanity. And in that beautiful understanding of redemption, as Christ comes, he comes to save us. And so we are taught through Mary's example of what the world can be and what humanity can be if we say yes to God. We can't even fathom what those perfect yeses can do in changing not only, obviously, our earthly existence, but our eternal existence. And so as Mary prays this beautiful prayer of the Magnificat, we ask for her special intercession today in our lives. May we, in everything that we do, from the smallest, what might seem as inconsequential or trivial action of the day, to sometimes maybe the largest <laughs> decisions of our lives, may we always do them in union with and always attempting to the best of our ability through the grace of God to conform our wills to God's will. And in doing so, we participate in this beautiful and this magnificent, magnificat, <laughs> dimension of God's presence and the mystery of redemption. Indeed, as we say to, I love the last line of today's gospel. I often think that many times in light of the Magnificat, we focus on that. But I like the last line because after this glorious prayer that Mary says, uh, St. Luke tells us, Mary remained with Elizabeth about three months and then returned to her home. <laughs> and there were pragmatic dimensions of that because she herself was moving along in her pregnancy. But Mary shows us, and Luke is telling us in this beautiful passage, that Mary brings Christ into the world, not only physically, but by her actions every day, including that returning home to Nazareth, she reminds us that God is very present in the ordinary. And he takes the ordinary and makes it extraordinary. And so Mary moves throughout her life in the normal way, because it is not Mary who looks to change the world, but it is Mary who allows God to change the world through her. May we look to that example, especially in these last days of Advent, and maybe especially as we are in the hurried pace of the countdown to Christmas, and we're asking the Lord every day for a little more patience, and I don't know about you, but I'm saying, can we get at least 25 hours out of the, out of the day instead of 24? May we look to her as that beautiful model of patience, love, and indeed faith. My dear brothers and sisters, let us now lift our hearts to the Lord and bring him our petitions this day. For the church, may the Lord continue to guide her <coughs> in carrying out his saving work this Advent season. Let us pray to the Lord. For all those who govern, may the Holy Spirit bless them with an abundance of understanding and prudence. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who are unemployed, alone, or without hope, especially in these darkest days of the year, let us pray to the Lord. For all of us gathered here today, may the Lord bless us and make us holy in his sight. Let us pray to the Lord. For all of our personal intentions, for those needs listed in our parish book of prayer, for all those we've promised to remember, and all those we bring now before the Lord in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. And let us remember all of our sick, especially those suffering in any way from this pandemic, and also all of those who care for them and all of our health care workers. 
that the Lord may give them continued strength, peace, and health. Let us pray to the Lord. And for Joseph and Olga Graniskrat, for whom we offer Mass today, and for all of the souls of the faithful departed, that they who have died may now find eternal rest and peace in God's heavenly kingdom, let us pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, as we await the birth of your Son, please hear and answer our prayers, which we make today through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we've received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we've received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands that will become for us our spiritual drink. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Trusting in your compassion, O Lord, we come eagerly with our offerings to your sacred altar, that through the purifying action of your grace we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, 
For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only sin.
My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord, for the Almighty has done great things for me. Let us pray. May reception of your sacrament strengthen us, O Lord, so that we may go out to meet our Savior with worthy deeds when he comes and merit the rewards of the blessed. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Peace Have a great day, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.